Please note that this worm factory was operated at the optimum temperatures and was started with a pound of red wiggler worms. Results will vary depending on the food, temperature, and the amount of worms used. Here we have our worm factory that's been working for about two weeks. Notice the nice mix of solid food and soil. This is a great sign that the worms have acclimated to the environment and the food is beginning to compost. Let's take a closer look at the food in the bin. In addition to our worm bedding, which included core, shredded paper, and cardboard, quite a bit of food has been added to this bin. Here we have a piece of pineapple skin and some leftover cucumber. Here we found a solid chunk of lettuce base. And as you can see, this is very hard and will take quite a while to compost. Here's a chunk of pineapple and some tomato that were put in yesterday. They feel pretty soft and should be decomposed in just a few weeks. This large squash peel is a little large for the worms. I'm going to tear this up so that it can decompose faster. A lot of this dark crumbly compost is from food that's been decomposed already. If you remember from stage one, we started with just a small amount of bedding. All of the paper we started with is gone and has become a part of the compost. All organic matter is made up of substantial amounts of carbon and nitrogen. The fastest way to produce rich compost is to maintain the right ratio of carbon to nitrogen. If you have too much nitrogen, your bin will become too wet and will also produce smelly anaerobic bacteria. If you have too much carbon, your bin will dry out and the decomposition process will slow down. An easy way to understand how food can be balanced is to think of waste in two categories, greens and browns. Green foods contain a large amount of nitrogen, whereas brown foods have a higher amount of carbon. Balancing the types of foods in your worm factory will help maintain optimum performance and it will help to keep your worms happy and healthy. Some foods that have a high carbon count are peanut shells, shredded paper, corn stalks, or shredded cardboard. Some foods that have a high nitrogen count are coffee grounds, vegetable scraps, fruit, or even seaweed. For a more detailed list, please refer to your manual. Waste for your worm factory can come from just about anywhere. Old kitchen scraps, leftovers from the refrigerator, or even fallen leaves from outsides can be an excellent source of food for your worm factory. When adding food, cutting or blending will help the waste to decompose faster. The rule is, the smaller the food, the faster it will decompose. Another way to speed up the decomposition process is to bury the food when you put it in. This will also help to reduce fruit flies. While everything will compost, the largest consideration is time. Some foods you should avoid adding into your worm factory are dairy products, meats, grass clippings, or citrus products. In addition to slowing down the composition process, these products can be harmful to your worms by drastically altering the temperature or introducing highly acidic substances. As you continue to use your worm factory, Management and awareness will become your largest allies in knowing what food you should put in. In this section, we'll look at how to add new trays and also how the worm factory's upward migration system works. When adding the second tray, it's important to remember that your worm factory should have been running for at least three weeks and that there's enough food for the second tray to fit on top. Before we add the new tray on, we need to remove the wet newspaper. When adding a new tray, place it directly on top of the first one. In the bottom of the new tray, we need to add a little bit of soil or compost from the previous tray to create a foundation for our next layer of compost. To create the foundation for the new tray, you can use leftover core or shredded paper, but if you've used all of your core or shredded paper that came with your package, you can get soil from anywhere. Once you have enough bedding to cover the bottom of the tray, you can now begin to add food. From this point on, we will only be adding food to the topmost tray. The bottom tray has now become the processing tray and the top tray, the feeding tray. The worm factory's upward migration system eliminates the need to sort worms from your finished compost. If you remember, the grid design on the trays allows the worms to crawl up through the trays once the food sources have become exhausted. 
Worms moving up through the trays also eliminates the need to sort the worms out of any finished compost. Follow the same steps when adding additional trays. In our final stage, we're going to look at a worm factory that's been in operation for 16 weeks. At this point, we've added all four trays and our worm factory is in full operation. Remember, this was operated at optimum temperatures and was started with a pound of red wriggler worms. Please note, results will vary depending on the food, temperature, and the amount of worms used. Here, our worm factory has three processing trays and one feeding tray. The top tray is all fresh foods. Notice the brighter colors of the fruits and the newly added food. Not much decomposition has happened yet. Worms also don't appear to have moved into this tray yet either, which is fine, it means they're still working in the bottom trays. On a side note, when you're checking progress of your trays, you can use the bottom side of the lid to place your trays safely on the ground. Here's our top processing tray. Notice how the colors are much darker than the feeding tray. This shows that things are starting to decompose and that the worms are beginning to move into this tray. This is looking good so far. Let's take a look at the next tray. Here's our next processing tray. The colors are much darker in this one and you can see quite a few more worms in this tray. We can also begin to see how the food is being decomposed. Most things have composted into this dark colored soil you can see here. This is a great sign. In addition, we can also begin to see what will take longer to decompose. Take a look at this corn cob. The worms haven't eaten this yet because it's so large. If this had been cut up, the worms would have been able to eat this and this would have decomposed much quicker. Looking around more in this tray, there are few worm eggs. This is a great sign that the worms are comfortable enough with this environment to reproduce. In the final tray, we have our finished compost. This is about how the end product should look. It should be a dark color and should crumble when you hold it. The finished compost should also feel somewhat moist. Vermicompost is great for holding and controlling moisture. There should even be a small amount of moisture in the bin, but should not be overly wet. The great thing about vermicompost is that a little bit goes a long way. Worm casts actually contain five times more nitrogen, seven times more phosphorus, and 11 times more potassium than ordinary soil, the main minerals needed for plant growth. But the large number of beneficial soil microorganisms in worm casts have at least as much to do with it. There are several ways you can use vermicompost in your house plants or garden. One method is to mix with potting soil. When mixing with potting soil, add two parts potting soil to one part vermicompost. Add this straight into the soil. Adding worm casts into the soil will introduce a surplus of beneficial microorganisms that will control moisture and provide air to the roots. Another method is to poke finger holes into the soil and add the vermicompost directly into the holes. Essentially, all you need to do with your vermicompost is use it as a fertilizer and place it around your plant roots. Every garden is different and experimenting with different uses will provide the best results. For further detailed instructions, you can also refer to your manual. Leachate is the liquid that is drained from your worm factory into the collection tray. This liquid can be drained out of the spigot and can be used directly on your plants as well.